Hello friends. For today's video, I wanted to give a list of recommendations for if you like Avatar The Last Airbender. If you don't know, I for the first time in my entire life have finally watched Avatar. I had never seen it. I've never been spoiled for it. I hadn't even seen the horrible adaptations of it. I was able to go in with pure fresh eyes for the first time ever and I have been going through each of the seasons in five episode chunks and then giving my thoughts and doing in-depth uh, sometimes an in-depth analysis on certain episodes or certain scenes, giving predictions, and it has been so fun. I think this fandom is one of the nicest, most welcoming fandoms, and I also now completely understand why so many people have so much nostalgia for this show, because it really is fantastic. And as a result of it being fantastic, since I've come to it as an adult and as somebody who loves stories of all kinds in all different kinds of mediums. I was looking at various aspects of the show and what make it stand out and what makes it so phenomenal. And I, want, I wanted to find recommendations for if you like these specific elements of Avatar The Last Airbender, then you might like these stories as well. Typically, I would do this over on that side channel, but since so many of my recommendations are one, books, which is what I primarily talk about here, and because I know a lot of book readers grew up watching Avatar The Last Airbender, I thought it would be well suited for this channel. However, all other Avatar content you'll find on Full Meta Analysis, and this video will be on my Avatar playlist. So if you are interested in seeing more Avatar content, I'll have that all linked in the description bar down below. Jumping into it, the first on this list is going to be Full Metal Alchemist, the thing in which my side channel's name is partially inspired by. So I'm not just recommending this because I love Full Metal and I'm looking for any chance to recommend it. I'm recommending this very specifically because if you love the way in which Zuko's character arc is handled across the seasons, then I definitely think you're going to appreciate the way that the character Scar in Full Metal Alchemist is handled. I do think that they are different enough where it doesn't feel like a copy paste, it doesn't feel like it's the same exact type of story. There are shared aspects to both of their arcs. However, they're very different characters and their motivations and why they do what they do and their anger, their constant pursuit of a certain thing. While there are similarities in that sense, the specifics are different. And I really wanted to make sure that nothing on this list was essentially almost like fan fiction of Avatar. I wanted to find specific elements that we can easily dive into and explore that. And so I think in Full Metal Alchemist, you will, if you like Zuko's arc progression, I think you will really enjoy exploring the character of Scar. You can check out the manga, or if you want to watch Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, then you can do that as well. If you are somebody who enjoys the visual side of things, especially because the action scenes are fantastic, and obviously Avatar is an animated show, so it makes sense that you might go from that to the anime of this. I will say the very first episode of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood feels like a strange pilot. I always let people know that when I talk about it. So that is true of it. And I actually think the first arc is not the best indication of all you have in store with Full Metal. Whereas Avatar, I think, starts out with a bang. It cuts straight to the point and in a very good, concise way. I do think Full Metal kind of meanders for a bit. And then once it settles in, Oh my gosh, there is a reason that still to this day, it's one of my favorite stories of all time. It's one of my favorite series. It's one of my favorite shows. It's so good. Avatar The Last Airbender's demographic, while of course anybody of any age can enjoy it and get a lot from it, I think its target demographic was kids. And Full Metal, I feel like, is just a little bit older in its target demographic, so it does feel like a natural progression to go from Avatar to Full Metal. The next recommendation is a video game. I promise I have a lot of books on this list. But if you want to basically have a story that looks at Zuko and Iroh's relationship with each other and makes it a thousand times more complex and so much more tragic, then play Ghost of Tsushima. Oh my gosh, that game. I have not seen a better execution of a very complicated, I understand why both sides feel the way they do, but also because they feel differently, it is the most heartbreaking thing. You, if you have played Ghost of Tsushima, you know it is devastating. So the setup for Ghost of Tsushima, it is actually historical fiction and it's looking at the Mongol invasion of Japan. And you have one man named Jin who is 
a samurai and he very much holds a lot of value in honor similar to what you see with Zuko this was instilled in him by his family and he fights against the initial invasion however the Mongols pretty much demolish the threat of the samurai that are trying to defend their home and you see Jin manage to kind of crawl his way back to recovery and he now has an opportunity almost like from the shadows to try and protect his people he's doing everything he can to help everybody against the Mongols and his uncle has been captured by them and so he wants to free his uncle. The Mongols want to use the uncle because they very strategically try to take prominent figures in the society they're trying to conquer and they try to make that individual convince the population to just give in and accept these new rulers and so the uncle is kind of trying to resist that and he's trying to do so while still abiding to the code of honor while Jin is starting to use certain strategies that involve things that would be considered dishonorable. So you see there's like a clashing of ideals and it is done so well. I really don't even think how I'm talking about it does it justice. It is phenomenal. It's one of the greatest, not just video games, but stories that I've ever encountered. It is so good. It's a breathtaking game. It's a fun game. And also the online mode is really a good time also. <laughs> so if you want to see a really well done familial relationship that has an uncle and his nephew. Look no further. Goes to Tsushima. And if you're not a gamer, try to find a way to watch it. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter if you're not a gamer. Try to find a way to take in that story because it is so good. It's so good. Next up, this one's a little out there, a little less related, I would say, on surface level. But if you kind of wish that we could take time to follow Zuko investigating uh, everything with his mother within the show itself, if you were to actually have the show kind of go in that direction where Zuko is looking into a family member and everything that transpired with them and happened to them, then maybe check out Descendant of the Crane. I think this also has a cast of characters that is somewhat similar to Azula, Ty Lee, Mei, Zuko. You have this group of characters that are within a society that is has a lot of power and they themselves hold a lot of power within this society, but they were all very young. They have sometimes clashing personalities or sometimes they turn against each other. Sometimes they stand by each other. There's twists and turns and you really don't know who's going to come out of it on the same side. And within all of that, our main character is investigating her father's death. So again, it's kind of like what if Zuko was investigating everything that happened with his mother during the course of the show. I think that in that sense, you might find some fun in Descendant of the Crane. Next up, I wanted to pose the question of what if a waterbender decided to defy the Fire Nation? How much would it cost them? Especially if it's somebody who it turned out was a waterbender, but they were living within the Fire Nation. And you see throughout Avatar The Last Airbender the way in which propaganda has been used to convince people since they're small to believe in the Fire Nation's cause. So what if somebody were to push back against that and that person was a waterbender? Read Sword of Kaigen. I don't think I need to say much more. <laughs> this is a booktube darling for a reason. There's very much a legitimate uh, argument as to why this has one of the most heartbreaking scenes in it, why it goes against your expectations, and why it doesn't follow the same kind of story structure that you typically find in fantasy stories. It's fantastic, and truly, it very much feels like what if a character with waterbending abilities, because the magic in this feels like waterbending, what if that character had to go against this superior force that not only has a lot of power, but also has the backing of a nation that adheres to whatever they have been told. Sword of Kaigen does that exceptionally. Next up, just in general, if you like the character of Zuko, I promise not all of these are totally Zuko related, but if you like the character of Zuko, check out the manga Vagabond. So Zuko, I think, is a character so many people appreciate because of how much time the show really takes to really depict what it costs a person to actually change. How long it takes, how you start to maybe see the truth, we'll call it, or you start to maybe question, you realize that 
Maybe the path you're on isn't the one you want to be on. However, it's a lot easier to just tell yourself like, no, no, it's fine. This is where I'm meant to be than it is to actually question, have I done wrong? Am I mistaken in my path? Should I change? And I think that Vagabond does that so exceptionally well. It does mean that a large portion of the beginning of the story, you're going to be like, Musashi, come on. Oh my gosh, change already. <laughs> but it would be insincere because what it actually takes a person to reflect and be introspective and then make steps toward the kind of person they want to be, it's not just a snap of your fingers sort of situation. It takes so much. And Vagabond really, really takes its time with that. Next up is a recommendation for a comparison of characters with Katara. So the recommendation be an ember in the ashes. When I was reading this series, I often would note that the main character would want to stop whatever she was doing to help whoever she could along her journey. And I think that's something that's very true of Katara as well. You see multiple episodes throughout the series where Katara understands what their main mission is. She understands it's important to basically stick to their schedule. But if there is an opportunity where she can help other people, she's going to take it. And I think that's very true of Laia in The Ember and the Ashes. I also think that there is a tiny bit of what if Katara and Jet actually joined forces as Laia is looking to join a resistance group in the Ember and the Ashes. And then there are elements that have to do with sibling relationships in this series, as obviously is the case in Avatar as well. Next up is a show recommendation. And similar to Full Metal Alchemist, I'm not just recommending this because I love it and I'm looking for any opportunity to talk about it. But genuinely, for me, even though I have really enjoyed watching Avatar The Last Airbender, there is one thing that I wish we could have gotten more of, which would be Azula and Ozai. I, in my mind, am like, what would it look like if we actually explored that dynamic a lot more? And I think if you are somebody who would like to see what would it look like if you had this really dark sort of twisted parental relationship between a father-like figure and a daughter, then arcane because i don't want to say the characters in case you have yet to watch arcane but there are two very notable characters that i think really the way in which the show shows their relationship and how they sort of feed off of each other the way that the the parental figure looks at the one character and sees themselves and sort of projects onto them and the way the other character is so influenced by them and turns themselves away from other characters that care very much about them. There's also a really difficult sibling relationship in that, different from Katara and Sokka, more so looking at Zuko and Azula, that I want to see what would happen if those two characters were trying to look out for each other as much as possible. So I just think Arcane has the sort of dark parental and child figures there, and then you also have the relationship between siblings. It's obviously not a one for one. It's not even close in its plot line, similar to each other. Although there is an element of there are the wealthy and the people that have so much, and then they profit off of those who don't have as much. So in that way, they're somewhat loosely related, but more so really, I'm like, what if we'd gotten more Azula Ozai fill in the blank characters in arcane. Next up is not necessarily anything to do with specific characters, but more so what it would look like if we actually explored not Aang and his plotline and the characters that he interacts with. And we're not really looking at characters within the Fire Nation either. We're looking at one of the villages or one of the cities that the Fire Nation takes over. And if that concept sounds good to you and you would like to see a story in which that is explored, then I think a Song of Silver Flame Like Night is a good one to check out. I also think the way in which the lore and the mystical creatures in this, the way it plays out throughout the story reminds me a little bit of the spirit realm in Avatar. So this one to me is more of like a world sort of 
comparison. It's not going to have the exact water bending, fire bending. It's not going to have necessarily direct elemental magic in the exact same way, but there are magician like characters that have their own set of magic. And then there are the oppressors and they want to take from the other individuals and their magic. They have their own sort of magic as well. So in that sense, there's something there, although it's not directly elemental. And then of course, you're seeing the way in which the oppressors have taken and benefited from those they have conquered. So really, I think there are some aspects to this that, again, it's not a direct character comparison, but if you like the idea of exploring how much an area would be impacted by being taken over by the Fire Nation, then I think this one might be really appealing to you. And also just in general, what it'd be like for the individuals there. It's almost like if you removed our main cast of characters but stayed in one of the villages or cities that they went to, what would it look like if we continued to explore that area or we did a offshoot, we kind of went in our own direction and followed that instead. Next up, another video game recommendation. I love, and you have heard me talk about this so many times, Final Fantasy X, but I'm specifically talking about this for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to find a character that was not sort of that brooding character that you get so often in stories, and I wanted to find somebody who was more upbeat, more chipper, and just a little bit more friendly and warm. And honestly, if you combine Sokka, who is kind of a little bit of an idiot, but lovable and innovative and brings the general mood of the party up, if you combine Sokka and Aang, who is generally optimistic and kind and sweet, smush them together and you have Titus from Final Fantasy X. Titus is so unlike so many of the characters I have seen, especially even just for the Final Fantasy franchise, but main characters in general. I just don't think you usually get characters like him. I kind of jokingly have said before, he's like the epitome of a himbo, but so rootable and he's kind of frustrating and sometimes kind of obnoxious and annoying, but you cannot help but be endeared to him throughout his tale. And he grows so much through the story. But I also wanted to highlight another element to this, which would be Bossing Say in Avatar and Yu Yevin in Final Fantasy X. So Bossing Say and the Earth Kingdom in general are sort of like the biggest form of hope and opposition opposition to the Fire Nation. And so as a result of that, there is this sense of this is where we're going to find peace. This is where we're going to find the answers. This is where we're going to find safety and comfort. And then in Final Fantasy X, you have what is kind of like a religious institution known as Yu Yevin. And there is an antagonist in Final Fantasy X. There's a number of them. It's not really along the same lines of the Fire Nation, but Yu Yevin is still trying to give people hope. It's trying to help give people answers and comfort during tough times, especially with the near apocalyptic force that the people of Spira are having to go up against in the form of something known as sin. So Yu Yevin is supposed to be this wonderful institution and Bossing Se is supposed to be this formidable but comfortable place to exist within. But then as you really pull back the layers and see what is beneath, it is not as pure as maybe meets the eye in both of those situations. So if you like the idea of there being something dark and much more sinister beneath what is supposed to be this place of comfort, or at least this ideal, this place of hope, I think there's a good chance that you will like Final Fantasy X. For this next one, I actually saw some recommendations for if you like Avatar, check this series out. And it's funny because I saw it a number of times, but I think it's maybe one of the least notable ones that I would compare. But I do think that the tone is a little bit more suited for a younger demographic. I think some of the things the character experiences are very similar to things that a lot of us experienced when we were really young, similar to what somebody might connect with in Avatar if they watch it at a young age, and that would be the Shadow and Bone trilogy. I do think the way in which the magic users in this are sort of broken up by their abilities is somewhat similar to what you see in Avatar. There is sort of an expansion. It's not just these four elements. And also you have a Chosen One-like character. You have Aang, obviously, in Avatar, and then in this you have Alina, who 
while she doesn't have air magic, she does have light magic, which is what's going to save the world from darkness, whereas Aang is going to save the world against the Fire Nation by combining all of the elements. And in this, you also have heart renders, and some of what heart renders can do reminds me also of something that we end up seeing with uh, blood bending in Avatar. I will say I've also seen some comparisons to Mistborn because metal bending is somewhat like what Toph ends up doing with her bending skills. Did I say metal bending? I meant Allomancy is somewhat like metal bending. If I misspoke, I apologize. I'm sure you were able to figure out what I meant though. But regardless, I've seen some comparisons there, but I do think that the stories both in Shadow and Bone and Mistborn are not that similar to Avatar. And I don't really think the characters themselves are all that similar, but I can understand why this one in particular, the Grishaverse, would be something that people would find as comparable. Next up, we have the Stormlight Archive. There's a number of things that I could pull as comparisons from this to Avatar, but the particular character that I wanna highlight and the difference between them in present day and them in the past would be Dalinar and comparing him to Uncle Iroh. So Uncle Iroh is somebody who has this reputation of being the dragon. He was this character that was known for being a force to be reckoned with. You did want, not want to go up against Iroh. And at some point, there was a turning point in his life. There was a loss in his life. And that sort of changed the entire course of his existence. And then now in present day, you are seeing him not be anything like what his reputation tells. And he also seems like he is trying to repent in a sense. And you see that very much in the way he treats Zuko and the way he treats essentially everyone. He's really considering his morals and he is trying to live by a set of principles. And I think Dalinar, while different in his presentation, his personality is not really the same. I think there aren't too many other characters that you explore in that similar way because Dalinar is somebody who also has a reputation. He was also known for being a force to be reckoned with. You dreaded the idea of the Blackthorn showing up on your metaphorical doorstep, we'll say. And he now in present day has turned away from that. He is somebody who's trying to live by a set of codes. He really wants to try and treat everybody with respect. And you also are noting that there was a loss in his life that was somewhat of the catalyst for this change. A big difference between the two is Dalinar doesn't quite have all of his memories, and so you were exploring that throughout the series. But I don't find too many other characters that have tried to change how they were in their youth. And they are now also trying to instill that, that wisdom into those that are younger and sometimes those that are younger push back against that. So I think in a lot of ways, there's some parallels between Dalinar and Iroh. Anyway, that's it for some. If you like Avatar The Last Airbender, check out these stories. Let me know what your recommendations would be. Feel free to recommend more shows as well as I haven't watched all that many, I would say, that are in a similar vein to Avatar, but I certainly wouldn't mind having more recommendations. After I'm through going through a lot of Avatar content, I do plan to watch through Attack on Titan, so I'm really excited for that one, but I really don't know too many other shows that I can compare to Avatar, and I would love your suggestions. And in general, it doesn't have to be shows, just your suggestions in general, so that if anybody comes to this video, they not only have my recommendations, but yours as well. If you are interested in any of these, I'll have them linked in the description bar down below. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you later. Bye.